guest, special friend, confident. He's also a, a contributor to the freedomoutpost.com and host to the Republic RTR Truth Radio Broadcast. He's a master researcher that I've been honored to have known for several years now. I've used her information on a continual basis. And I hope we last longtime friends forever and ever. Lori, are you there? I am here. Thank you, Gordon, for having me today. That was really wonderful. <laughs> I, I foresee us being friends until the Lord takes us. Well, I, I, I sure hope that isn't too long from now. I mean, it's uh, for me anyway, I am in so much pain with this diabetic uh, neuropathy thing that it's just oh, clouding my thinking. Can't even, uh, can't even think straight. Today's show, and one of the reasons that I've, I've uh, called you up and, and uh, requested that you be on my show because I know you do the research in, in the, uh, and I guess what do you call it, the back door or the backstage of uh, at least the political realm. And when I need your help today is I've just heard so much conflicting stories and information about uh, Cliven Bundy and Ryan Bundy and Ammon Bundy mm -hmm. and the American Patriots and the Bunkerville standoff and the protests and the trial and who said what, where, when, and how. Mm -hmm. And the latest thing that I saw, and I, I'm still nauseated seeing it, mm -hmm. that is the uh, video uh, by Lisa Bundy letting us know from her lips mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, what's going on uh, with her husband and, and the rest of the Bundys and how they're mistreating them in these private uh, correctional facilities. So mm -hmm. can Please update me and everybody else as to what is going on, exactly what's going on, and, and what's, uh, how they're being treated, uh, still in custody, I guess. And, mm -hmm. uh, you let us know what's going on? Sure, absolutely. Okay. So in reference to what you were talking to, um, what happened was on May the 2nd, uh, I had reported on this on May the 3rd, but it was um, May the 2nd at 10 p.m. in the evening. Ammon Bundy was in his – now, uh, first it needs to be understood. He is in a solitary cell. Um, he has still been in solitary, but uh, – and, and I hope it doesn't get confusing. If it does, just ask, and I will get a little more specific uh, after I give you kind of the details of what went on. So he was in his solitary cell, and on his bunk, he had a shirt that was hanging on his bunk. Apparently not only um, in him, but a lot of the other inmates do that as well. And he did not know it was against quote-unquote protocol. So on the 2nd at approximately 10 p.m., a guard went in there and uh, about the shirt hanging off um, of his bunk, making a really big deal about this shirt that was hanging off of his bunk. So Ammon asked him, you know, what the big deal was and um, that he didn't realize it was against um, quote-unquote procedure, if you will. And um, so then at that point, the 
the individual guard took the shirt. Now, normally people go, okay, why would this be a problem? Well, the problem was Ammon's other shirts he did not have any access to. And in the, in the morning, if you do not have a shirt, you are not allowed to receive breakfast. Okay, so that was the only right. shirt that he had access to. So <clears throat> his brother Ryan kind of heard a little bit of what was going on and, and went over there and asked them, you know, what what was the situation, what was the big deal, and this, that, and the other. And so I guess at one point, um, I don't know who did it first. Um, there's conflicting reports, um, but the the reports that I'm getting is Ryan tried to grab the shirt um, from the guard so that Ammon wouldn't have to go without food the following morning. <clears throat> At that point, the guard, you know, is trying to keep the shirt. Now, it does appear because other individual inmates do have their shirts um, hung off their bunks. Uh, so it would appear that it was just an excuse to really single him out because what you have to understand the backstory before I go any further is that um, Ryan and Ammon have been in solitary for a very, 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 very long time. And um, to the point that Ryan even has filed a lawsuit, which I'll get to in a few moments. But anyway, so there was some words. Um, Ryan accidentally went... <clears throat> When Ryan accidentally uh, brushed the guard's hand, um, they told Ryan um, that they wanted to talk to him outside of the outside of the cell. And then when they got him outside of the cell is when they went to handcuff him and put him in this three by three shower stall. Um, you know the CCA. Um, tries to say, well, we don't have a three-by-three three solitary. No, they don't. They use the shower stalls. And um, so what had happened was Ammon, of course, stepped out of the um, – uh, he had peeked through the window of the solitary because he told the guards he wanted to know what they were doing with his brother, and he called them liars because, of course, they had handcuffed him and, and they were – uh, get ready and throw him in that three by three shower cell. So it went from there. Then, um, from what I am gathering, as soon as uh, he called them liars, they then uh, pretty much tackled him, tussled him to the floor. They had his legs shackled, his arms uh, handcuffed behind his back, extremely tight to the point that. It put and cut off the circulation to his arms, and they placed him in a three-by-three three shower cell. Now, while he was shackled with his hands behind his back in this three-foot-by-three-foot three shower, um, Ammon was tortured. He was beaten. He was kicked. They had taken their fingers and, of course, stuck them in his ears, behind his ears, you know, and... The different things like that and um, so what had happened is they didn't give him any accessibility for food or water uh, any place to use the bathroom um, he actually ended up having to use the bathroom right there in the shower cell um, in that three by three foot because he had no other option now his ankle shackles were so tight on his ankles that his ankles began to bleed, so they had to remove them. They were videotaping this whole scenario. Um, so what had happened with, um, from that point, that is when, that is when Lisa, uh, after, a, after, excuse me, after Ryan had been let out of the 3x3 three three cell, he was kept in the 3x3 three three for one hour. So after he was let out of the three by three cell, he was kind of in an eye shot of where Ammon actually was. Even though he couldn't see Ammon completely, he 
could see somewhat of what was going on. So he was able to get to the phone. He was able to contact and get the message out um, to Ammon's wife about the torture that was going on with Ammon. And it was to the point There was of, an issue about, uh, about the time limit. Wasn't uh, he left in that uh, position in that three-by-three by, by three, uh, box shower? For over uh, 13 what? hours. 13 hours. Um, shackled, I would say... Ankle I, shackled and hands behind the back. Correct. And very tightly to the point that circulation um, was cut off to his arms. Now... Of course, like I had previously told you before, they got him into the three-by-three is when they were, you know, uh, kicking him and hitting him and and doing all sorts of manner of craziness um, of abuse with him. And um, so what had happened is they had told Ammon that he was going to be in there for 72 hours. Well, once the message got out, of course, everybody started reporting what was going on and and started making phone calls to everybody, whether it be from Washington to the Congress to the Nye County Sheriff to CCA and so on and so forth. So after approximately 13 hours, um, there was a SWAT, a quote-unquote SWAT team. It probably wasn't a real SWAT team. I would say it was probably guards dressed up as a SWAT team, but that's what they appeared. Their appearance appeared to be a SWAT team. Yeah. So they pulled Ammon out of the three-by-three three shower, and then, of course, when, the, when they pulled him out of there, he was having problems walking or standing. You know, because he's been in a three foot by three foot, and if anybody has seen him, and he's not a little tiny fella, you know, um, and he was uh, forced to walk when he couldn't hardly barely move, they would kick his legs um, tr to try to force him to move. So then when they got to the point of getting him out of there, they stripped him completely naked and, of course, did a strip search and uh, from what I'm understanding by the way that Ammon said it was uh, sounds like it was probably also a body cavity search as well and then they threw him in the regular solitary confinement cell but naked after right. he was left in the solitary confinement cell uh, naked and injured um, one guard um, did uh, finally, and I, I would say this was not the individual that was part of the quote-unquote SWAT team part. This was the, the individual who was over, who looks over the floor. And the individual who looks over the floor. Do we have any names, Lori? I'd like not, to names. not as of yet. If we did, I would be spewing them. You know I would. Um, okay, appreciate that. So, uh. The, the one guard that's normally over the floor did have compassion enough to finally give Ammon back his underclothes. Uh -huh. Okay? So, that's the good news on that. With that being said, all the calls that had gone out um, about the situation that was going on um, is really, truly the reason I personally believe and many others believe that Ammon was finally pulled out of there. Now, Ammon was able to speak with Kelly Stewart finally over a phone. And according to um, Ammon and according to Lisa Bundy, um, uh, Ammon's shoulder was uh, dislocated and his wrist was dislocated. He had to put that back in himself. Oh. His ankles were bleeding. And so after all these calls started coming in, and of course he was put back in the regular solitary confinement, um, and they started getting so much heat on the situation that was going on, um, Eric Parker's wife, she reported that <clears throat> that detention center had decided they were completely closing down the dissension center at that point and not allowing any visitations to occur. So it appears as if one of two things was going on. Either A, 
um, uh, and like I said, this is an appearance. It doesn't mean it's actually a fact, but it appeared that the reason that they were stopping any visitations, they were stopping lawyers from being able to go in there, they were stopping all of the all of the inmates, not just the Bundys, all of the inmates from having visitations, phone calls, anything at that point. And um, so with were that... They blaming, uh, were they blaming uh, the, the reason for this on uh, Emmons' treatment? Who, the, the uh, CCA? Yeah, that, uh, that the treatment that was levied to, to Ammon uh, is cause for all the other prisoners to be punished. I have not heard any statement from them as to what their quote unquote justification um, would be. Well, I understand understand this, Lori. I've been around the law enforcement community for thirty nine years, mm-hmm. and I'm not, I'm not a desk jockey. I mean, right? I'm, I know. I'm yeah. the real thing, mm-hmm. and of course, I've seen every imaginable actions by inmates. Uh, one that, uh, uh, as far as I can see, mm-hmm. where everything was justified and the baiting of, of officers. But we're talking about something totally different here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The situation is totally different. Now, uh, May 2nd, when I heard that the trial was either uh, uh, a it was mistrial an- or it was... Uh, uh, they were found uh, not guilty, or, or I'm not even sure. But well, that that there's a reason you're not sure. Okay. Why is that? Why is there that? were um, anyone who has had the blessed ability ability to be able to follow this. Judge Navarro did everything humanly possible to not only violate every individual's rights in there. Um, the She's trying to change precedent, Mm -hmm. and to the point that they had approximately 30 witnesses, the defendants had approximately 30 witnesses they were going to put on the stand in order for their defense. You have a right not only to face your accuser, but you also have a right to bring defendants, I mean, uh, witnesses on your behalf to be able to prove your innocence. Well, Navarro didn't allow all of them except for two, to the point that one of the defendants, Eric Parker, decided to take the stand and not keep his silence under his Fifth Amendment because he knew that the truth would not get out if he didn't take the stand. And um, so what happened was, uh, after the jury had deliberated for over six days, and uh, there was conflicting things that were coming out. Some people were saying um, not guilty. Some people were saying hung jury. Some people say mistrial. But what really happened was when Navarro told everybody what was uh, what the jury decision was, that these six defendants, according to Navarro, it was a hung jury, that there was ten that – would not go with the um, not guilty, but they couldn't get a unanimous decision. Now, that was the report coming out of the court. What's well, the date? the date on that? What would, the, what would be the time frame? Um, I believe that was around April. Give me one second, and I can tell you that would have been around April 24th. That That's an approximate 24th, 25th, 26th, somewhere right in there. And, of course, the mainstream news media isn't going to cover it. Oh, they're not, and there's a reason. Um, so when you go to looking, I, I know that you know that um, the federal government, anybody who's been covering anything has to do with um, the land issues and the, the Bundy situation and the Oregon situation and any of those situations. They're being picked up all over this this union. And Stop a second. Uh, when you say land issues, I'm not sure if everyone is totally uh, aware, but is the overreach by the mm-hmm. federal government to mm-hmm. acquire land? Correct. Right? Correct. Oh, looks like we're going to commercial, so stay on the line, Larry. Okay. There's a man with a gun over there. 
are telling me I got to beware. I think it's time we stop, children. What? The new word on the street is bloated. Yeah, you eat this food, GMO, herbicide, pesticide. Foods aren't safe anymore. And then we eat them, and we're bloated. Our stomach says, no, no, no more, Seymour. So what we have to do is drink the tea. Are you on the tea? Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. Super strength tea. It will help you with the new word, bloated. You can get it today. Log on to get the tea.com. So you love talk radio. Then you'll love talkstreamlive.com. TalkStream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Without the right accessories, any guy can be off the mark. Whether you've invested thousands in your arsenal or you own a single trusted firearm, a visit to aroutfitting.com is in order. It's one of the finest online selections of tactical optics and AR parts and add-ons, like EOTech, quick target acquisition with no peripheral loss. Browse the full range of Nikon scopes and binoculars. Aroutfitting.com can illuminate your world with streamlight gun-mounted lights from keychain to large handhelds up to 1,100 lumens. Find some stability with Battenfield Tactical Bipods. AirOutfitting.com has CMMG gun parts, barrels, assemblies, handguards, part kits, and more. Plus magful clips and magazines. I know I've got you excited, so take a breath. Head to AirOutfitting.com. The site's super easy to navigate and features a ton of technical info, including links to manuals. We also welcome vendor and manufacturer inquiries. Remember, if you don't see it, we can get it at AirOutfitting.com. Homeowners, if your lender has gone out of business or sold your transaction to another lender or servicer, you may be the victim of a wrongful foreclosure resulting in the loss of your home. If you've already lost your home, are in foreclosure, or even in good standing, you can challenge the mortgage transaction's illegal issue and your property can be restored to you. And your foreclosure can be stopped or reversed and the mortgage transaction declared unenforceable. State laws, U.S. title codes, the Uniform Commercial Codes, and U.S. Supreme Court rulings have upheld that defective mortgage documentations can reverse or stop foreclosures and enforce property title claims in favor of the homeowner. We are having successes in stopping the process of foreclosure, the enforcement of the foreclosure judgments, the sale of property, and evictions after the sale. We are not attorneys, and we don't give legal advice. We are a professional team of legal researchers, providing forensic mortgage audits and expert witnesses. We have the knowledge to produce the evidence and enforce laws regarding your legal issues. We've been in business for 12 years without a complaint. Consultations are free, and we provide a free title search to confirm if your mortgage has legal defects. Please call 855-253-3748. 855-2-KEEP-IT-TODAY. Hey, this is Gordon Martinez. This show is called America to Honor, brought to you by RBN, and we have a special guest on the show, uh, Lori Anderson, and she is a contributor to the FreedomUpPost.com and host of Resurrect the Republic, RT, RTR, Truth Radio Broadcast. You know, we're talking about uh, the Bundy situation, uh, Bunkerville protest. Uh, the Oregon uh, uh, protest and occupation, uh, the murder by allegedly federal agents of Robert uh, Mm -hmm. Finnecum. And I've noticed, uh, maybe it's just me, but I haven't uh, seen much uh, mainstream news media talking about uh, this very important issue. You've got uh, what, uh, I don't even know how many uh, patriots we have in custody. I know uh, Ammon and Cliven and, and Ryan Bundy, uh, the ones that uh, first brought this to, to light about the government overreach of, of land. And uh, then all of a sudden this kind of died off. And this latest video that I saw of Lisa Bundy talking about what's what is going on in the uh, private uh, corrections uh, uh, industry and, and the federal government uh, keeping people in custody and haven't even uh, been convicted of anything and and uh, the, the misconduct by federal judges 
uh, and especially, I, I guess the one that was the topper for me is when uh, Gloria Navarro, Judge Gloria Navarro, a federal judge, who is uh, hearing the uh, the information and the evidence against the Bundys uh, and is uh, conducting the trial, uh, she her feeling is that, and I don't know, uh, maybe she's been smoking crack or something, I don't know, uh, but she believes that if an American citizen has possession of a firearm, just possession, and is confronted by a police officer or a law enforcement officer, that that in itself constitutes an assault against that police officer. Mm -hmm. Now, she published this. I mean, this was, this was right out there. This was her decision, and she's listening to this case. She's the one that's controlling this this uh, this trial, and with thinking like that, boy, no wonder this country is in trouble. And I, I'm disappointed, actually, in in uh, the American Patriot movement that they more are are not more outraged by the conduct of the federal government against uh, American citizens, American patriots that have committed no crime yet; they haven't been convicted of anything. But they are incarcerated, they are being tortured, and nobody is, is stepping up to the plate here. It doesn't seem like anybody, because this is important stuff, folks. This can happen to anybody. All you got to do is just piss somebody off, and uh, you're right down there in the hurt locker. So, so continue, uh, please, uh, Laurie, on... on on other revelations that you, you, you've researched out and, and uh, uh, are committed against these, uh, these people. Uh, sure. Um, so it was found out, uh, Deb Jordan, who is also part of the Guerrilla Media Network, who is uh, on there with uh, Pete Santilli, who is also incarcerated. And he is incarcerated, why? For reporting on what went down at the Bundy Ranch and what went down in Oregon because the true narrative had to get out there. So he actually didn't chop things up. It was covered live. So the media had a really hard time distorting that. So he is in there. So she was going through the PACER. And PACER, for those of you who do not know what PACER is, that is where the the courts actually scan those documents in of these cases and provide the documents for what has gone on in court. So she was going through PACER, and she found the um, grand jury decision. And I'm going to let you hear about that in just a moment. But she found paperwork proving that on counts one and two, which were the conspiracy in the first place, it was a unanimous not guilty. But there's some twists and turns on that, which, of course... Judge Navarro never let the public know about. I'll finish that on the other side of the break, guys. Okay. Sunday morning ever, and Sunday's passing by. I'll be working here forever, at least until I die. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. I'm supposed to get a raise next week, you know that when I won't. Working for a living, black. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Do you have difficulty taking supplements? Are you searching for a high-quality, complete nutritional drink that your whole family will love? Nutramedical's Life Support has arrived. All of your daily nutritional requirements in one quick, delicious drink. Dr. Bill Deagle's Life Support is a proprietary blend of vegan protein, activated vitamins, essential minerals, amino acids, probiotics, green tea, digestive enzymes, anti-inflammatories, cancer prevention, detoxification, and much more. Your body will high-five you for this one. Life Support is the best complete nutritional 
delicious meal replacement on the market. Whether you are an elite athlete, have post-operative challenges, chronic illness, elderly, or a family that just wants a quick, delicious drink, try Dr. Bill Deagle's Life Support for optimized nutrition in one great-tasting smoothie. Just add cold water, almond milk, fruit, or anything else you like. Nutramedical's Life Support. Try our great-tasting chocolate or vanilla today. Call 888-212-8871 or visit us online at Nutramedical.com. Nutramedical.com for the whole family. Extendivite really works. Just listen to what some people have to say. Several years ago, I was developing a very uh, severe situation. I called it my flippy heart. It was just was doing not good things. And I did not want to go to a medical doctor because uh, I just knew they would give me a cover-up pill. I didn't want to get onto that sort of thing at all. When I learned it was garlic and cayenne, and cayenne is a healer. It is a wonderful herb. I said, I think I'm on to something here. I'll tell you, I wouldn't be without it. It did wonderful things for me. Extendivite is only $69.95 for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid. Call now. That's 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. It's time for you to have your own custom smartphone app for your business and pay way less than you can imagine. Introducing the I Can Get To Silent Salesman mobile marketing app, a global mobile marketing and communication tool for your business. Go to appsapart.com and learn how you could earn up to $36,351 or more per month just by inviting two people or less into a $14.95 per month program. Go to appsapart.com and be sure to watch the video at the top of the site and listen to the audio message from the CEO near the bottom. This is something you won't want to miss. Go to appsapart.com now or call 646-860-9540. That's 646-860-9540. Get the I Can Get 2. That's I-C-A-N-G-E-T, the number 2, silent salesman app at appsapart.com. That's A-P-P-S-A-P-A-R-T.com. You've probably heard about all the great benefits of goat milk soap. But did you know, some companies take shortcuts. At Old New England Soap, we make our organic goat's milk soap using 36% goat's milk. That's 17% more than most others. Our bars are larger, so they last longer, producing lots of lather packed with vitamins. And our soap is a natural moisturizer that smooths dry and damaged skin. Order online at oldnesoap.com. That's oldnesoap.com. You've tried the rest. Now try the best. Oldnesoap.com. Water-based soaps on supermarket shelves use harsh chemical acids to break down dead skin cells. And that's just not good for you. At Old New England Soap, our soaps are made without chemical ingredients, contain no alcohol or petroleum products, and use 85% organic materials and carry the USDA's organic certification. Try some today. Go to oldnesoap.com. That's oldnesoap.com. Oldnesoap.com. Hey, this is Ford Martinez. The show is called American Honor. It's brought to you by RBN. Our special guest is Lori Anderson. Lori, is there is there anyone, any other group that is as outraged as I am about where this has finally led? I mean, Ammon and Ryan and Cliven, they've been in, in, in federal prison, uh, and they've done nothing wrong yet. They've, done, they've not been convicted of anything yet, yet our government, our our culture is allowing these people to be incarcerated, put in solitary confinement, mistreated, uh, and they haven't uh, they haven't even been uh, convicted of anything. Is there anyone that's as outraged as I am? I mean, I feel like uh, I mean I don't know what to do. Oh, absolutely. Um, they're not individual quote unquote groups, if you will, but there are people all across the United States of America that are outraged about this to the point that they now have uh, an amazing uh, thing that has happened. Um, after the situation with what happened to Ammon, it's actually a really good thing. First, I want to I make this clear to all the listeners that listen to you. The prison that they are in is not even, quote, unquote, belong to the federal government. It is a private prison. It is owned by CCA. 
and um, the individuals, according to recorded phone calls, the quote-unquote officers that are in that prison who are the prison guards and the different things, they don't even take an oath. So it is no different than a Walmart building with Walmart employees holding individuals hostage, even though they have a contract with the federal government. CCA has a long history of abuse. Um, you can look it up, and I'll, get, I'll send you the links, uh, Gordon, so that y'all can maybe put it under the show, all the way back to 2007, where individuals have, quote-unquote, slipped and fell in the shower, and they had um, severe brain injuries and brain um, uh, trauma and ended up dying. Originally, CCA's excuse for existence was for the illegal aliens that are in our country, and of course, they've gone more like that. So what has happened, now there are protesters outside of that CCA in Nevada, which I cover on my YouTube, and I'm going to be covering more of that. So if y'all want to stay up to date on that, you can go to my Google Plus um, under Lori Anderson, L-O-R-R-I. A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. I do post on there the most update information before I can get it out to people, and it lets you know about these protests. So there's people that are camping out now in front of the CCA. The um, prisoners, where the goal was to get the prisoners um, to kind of be mad at the Bundys for the situation that were going on, well, that backfired in the face of the CCA for closing the stuff down because all the prisoners that were in lockdown decided, you know what, we're not doing this. So instead of um, turning on the Bundys, they all decided the only thing they can control was when it was time for them to eat. So they did a protest inside the prison from their solitary confinement, and they refused, all of them refused to go and eat. So now they're allowed to make phone calls and receive visits, and an attorney has gone in and there are protests, and people are, are, are calling for people to go out there, sit there, and peacefully protest. People are also um, scheduled to be going to the Nye County Sheriff's uh, Department as well for protest. People are coming from all over the country to do that. So there are individuals um, taking a stand on this, and it's actually starting to finally gain some attention, which I'm thankful for because we were finding out as um, – even though, you know, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Well, that happened to Ammon, but because of that happened to Ammon, we are now finding out that a lot of individuals in that private prison have previously been abused, and they have filed reports, and of course nothing was done, but they were retaliated against as well. And we can't stand for this in any prison in the United States of America. I don't care if they're a patriot. I don't care what their belief is. I don't even care if they're an illegal alien because it's like this. This is against humanity. This is not about a political spectrum at this point, and we cannot allow this to stand. So they do have protests ongoing right now. People are going to be coming in later this week. Also, I know that Gavin uh, Saim, another uh, individual, very liberty-loving individual, speaks out against this. He's supposed to be going um, around Monday or Tuesday. And uh, so they are speaking out, and they are starting to gather. So while the CCA was dealing with an outside protest, they also ended up having to deal with an inside protest. So they're kind of like the Oreo in the middle right this second. They don't want that attention drawn to them. Just like I said with the 2007 incident that I found out about, it, it was really – there's over 107 people who have died within the CCA. So this is not a federal prison. This is no different than a Walmart with Walmart employees wearing a uniform, which is, of course, the reason I say that, Gordon, uh, knowing your law enforcement experience, they did not take an oath of office. They do not have a bond. Therefore, they are simply a person who is hired and wearing a uniform. So that is no different. Right. That's all they so are, that just is, contractors. That's right. So there is no difference between them and a Walmart. So it is the Nye County Sheriff. Uh, the last report that I did find out about, according to what is being said, that the attorney did get to visit Ammon. The comment was he didn't even barely recognize Ammon. When he was sitting there with Ammon, Ammon was shackled uh, with his feet and his arms behind his back. And, of course, they have the long socks. 
the long socks um, uh, were covering his cuts. His attorney tried to pull down his sock, and as he tried to pull down his sock, because I guess he was going to get some proof of his cut ankles, the assistant warden, um, it is being said that the assistant warden stepped in and uh, forced the lawyer to leave and told him he wasn't allowed to do that. So that's the last situation on on that of what I know. There are protests going. If I could go, I would be there myself to report on what is going on. However, let's make this clear because I know that the show is not super, super long. I want to make this clear. This is not about Ammon Bundy. It is not. That's this. Correct. This, this corrupt judge, let me tell you the precedent that she is trying to set. She's making it right now with her words and her actions. She's making it unlawful for you to peaceably assemble. She's making it unlawful for you to report on what is going on on the ground, freedom of the press. She is making it unlawful for you to protest peaceably. She is making it unlawful for you to have a redress of grievances against your government. She is making it unlawful for your unalienable right to bear arms, to have a sidearm on your hip, holstered and safe, to even be around in a peaceful assembly in a peaceful protest against the egregious situation that is going on and claiming that as a quote-unquote threat that those government, quote-unquote government agents which they are not, they are land management, they are not land enforcers, they are land management, and when you do the research on that, well, that's a whole nother ball game in and of itself. Well, so, it all depends on who you, who you ask. I mean, uh, who owns the land? Well, and, and that's a whole nother ball game too, but I want to bring this up, Gordon. Before we get further into this, I want this to be made clear. I have a clip, and... This individual is an attorney, okay, and his name is Stephen Stubbs. He has nothing to do with the Bundys themselves. He is not an attorney for any of the defendants. He simply went into the courtroom to listen to what was going on. As Judge Navarro refused to allow a pup's a speedy or a public trial, by the way, because she refused to allow it to be recorded, which is another violation. We can stack them up all day long about what this woman has done. I want you to hear what he said that he saw for himself. Now, this is a third party. This is not someone who's in the quote-unquote patriot movement. This is not somebody who's on the defense or the prosecution side. He just simply wanted to see what was really going on. If you would, go ahead and play that clip. Attorney Stephen Stubbs. I'm a Nevada attorney, I love our Constitution, and I have some real concerns right now. Uh, Currently, juries are deliberating. Actually, they took the weekend off. They're going to start again next week. But juries are deliberating with with a a number of men who are standing trial in Nevada courts, federal courts, um, for their alleged roles in the Bundy case, where there were the cows out in Bunkerville, the Bunkerville standoff. And I had a conversation with a number of the attorneys on the case today. Um, I, I, uh, I was sad. I was really sad. Because these men are, are literally being tried because they were exercising their First Amendment rights while they were exercising their Second Amendment rights. Because these men, none of them at the trial, pointed a gun at, at an officer. None of them. But but because these men were protesting out in Bunkerville, by the way, that's the sticks, right? That's rural. That's where everybody has a sidearm. These men were protesting out in Bunkerville, and they had guns, and it put police officers in fear for their lives. And because these police officers were in fear for their lives, these men are in trial. Uh, I... I don't even know where to start um, because you're not supposed to have either or with your constitutional rights. You're supposed to have all your constitutional rights. And it concerns me that this question is going to the jury. Now, if these men lose, 
it will give an opportunity for an appeal and an opportunity for the federal courts uh, to, to decide some very important issues. That's the only silver lining. But I don't think these men should be convicted of anything. Um, they didn't brandish their weapons. They didn't point their weapons. They did nothing but have weapons on them. And, uh, and it concerns me that these attorneys were telling me that uh, they were given limine instructions or limiting instructions uh, to where they were not allowed to argue the First Amendment. Judge Navarro didn't allow them to argue the Second Amendment. They were not allowed to argue that they, uh, these men were exercising both their First Amendment right to protest and their Second Amendment right to, uh, to bear arms. Uh, that's concerning. I pray for these men. Please join me and pray for these men uh, because I, I don't think what happened is right. Oh, they were talking to me about all the Facebook posts. They, they admitted Facebook posts of, they call them non-indicted co-conspirators. Um, people that weren't on trial. None of them were on trial of these Facebook posts. They didn't have any Facebook posts about the men that were on trial or from the men that were on trial. But because they were all there, Judge Navarro allowed for, um, for these Facebook posts to be admitted even though they had nothing to do with these men because they were unindicted co-conspirators. That's pretty troubling too. Um, so pray for our justice system. Pray for these men. Um, hopefully our constitution will get upheld here. Uh, because I personally don't believe uh, that we should have either or with our rights. So uh, God bless you. So that is from a third party who had nothing to do with any of it and wanted to know what was going on. And so during um, a live show with Kelly Stewart and some other individuals, uh, it was exposed about the jury <clears throat> document, and I have that clip for you as well. So in a live show, Ammon's lawyer, who had nothing to do with obviously these individual cases because Ammon wasn't on trial at the time, but Ammon's lawyer speaks out about the actual document that has been found. If you would, go ahead and play that clip. News about the jury uh, verdict form? Is that what you wanted to do first? Well, there's a whole lot of things that I want to talk about. However, tonight I think the main topic is this jury form. We would like to understand um, some of the behind the scenes that we do know is that last Thursday the jurors were called back or came back into before the judge with a question, and their question was uh, regarding con the conspiracy charge. Um, that then that question was sealed, so we really didn't understand what the full question was. And now we're seeing on this uh, jury far form that under the conspiracy count one and two, that they reported as a hung jury, um, that they had actually originally marked not guilty across the board, including Greg Burleson and Todd Engel. Yeah. So, um, so what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so there's a lot of things. Uh, what's really interesting is, so after, you know, the jury comes into the courtroom and does the actual performance of delivering uh, delivering their verdict, and I, I, I don't mean to, pro to slight what they do, but, you know, court is a live process. And then they reduce their decision formally to orders, et cetera, and that kind of thing, and there's what's called the court docket. And then the court enters official orders and filings and things like that on the docket. Well, what we noticed and what was brought to our attention by some, some basically trial observers and candid fans uh, – who also are looking at the docket, um, yet, uh, let's see, on the 24th, it's a docket entry 1903, the court entered the official jury verdict form. And the official jury verdict form is signed by the jury foreperson, and it's the legal document that exists from the time of the verdict onward that legally attests to the result of the trial. And, and, you know, there are other records that get created that don't matter legally. Juror notes and things like that seldom, if ever, matter. I don't think there's laws that say they can't matter. Um, there's the things that get said in the courtroom 
that sometimes matter. And one of the things we're actually trying to get a hold of and we still don't have is an actual recording of what happened during some of these discussions. Right now, uh, the transcript and those recordings are sealed. That's normal. Uh, but we need to get access to those, and I think we have access to those, but we haven't been able to review them since this news started to break. But somebody reviewing the jury verdict form noticed something rather unusual, and that is on the jury verdict form, they, they didn't, well, the two things. The first thing, count one and count two, which are the conspiracy charges, which is, you know, this is really the crux of the case. If you read the indictment, the conspiracy against the federal government is the thing that's kept these guys uh, in prison uh, all this time on pretrial detention and it's the the you know most egregious catch-all offense for lumping all these defendants together etc and there are seven or six different legal conclusions the jury was asked to make on each of these conspiracy counts and the jury verdict form reads And we'll finish that right after words from their sponsors. There are... This is not legal advice. This is a public service announcement from TakeFromCaesar.us. Only one statute explains how to tax your paycheck, Tax Code Section 83. In decisions from 1979 to 2011, the courts say Section 83 governs the taxation of all compensation for personal services, but the IRS lies on the stand claiming to be unfamiliar with Section 83. Only one person can explain what Section 83 means, David Merlin. Visit TakeFromCaesar.us for more information. It's time for you to have your own custom smartphone app for your business and pay way less than you can imagine. Introducing the I Can Get To Silent Salesman mobile marketing app, a global mobile marketing and communication tool for your business. Go to appsapart.com and learn how you could earn up to $36,351 or more per month just by inviting two people or less into a $14.95 per month program. Go to appsapart.com and be sure to watch the video at the top of the site and listen to the audio message from the CEO near the bottom. This is something you won't want to miss. Go to appsapart.com now or call 646-860-9540. That's 646-860-9540. Get the I Can Get 2. That's I-C-A-N-G-E-T, the number 2, silent salesman app at appsapart.com. That's A-P-P-S-A-P-A-R-T dot com. You've probably heard about all the great benefits of goat milk soap. But did you know, some companies take shortcuts. At Old New England Soap, we make our organic goat's milk soap using 36% goat's milk. That's 17% more than most others. Our bars are larger, so they last longer, producing lots of lather packed with vitamins. And our soap is a natural moisturizer that smooths dry and damaged skin. Order online at oldnesoap.com. That's oldnesoap.com. You've tried the rest. Now try the best. oldnesoap.com. Water-based soaps on supermarket shelves use harsh chemical acids to break down dead skin cells. And that's just not good for you. At Old New England Soap, our soaps are made without chemical ingredients, contain no alcohol or petroleum products, and use 85% organic materials and carry the USDA's organic certification. Try some today. Go to oldnesoap.com. That's oldnesoap.com. Oldnesoap.com. This is not legal advice. This is a public service announcement from takefromcaesar.us. Only one statute explains how to tax your paycheck, Tax Code Section 83. In decisions from 1979 to 2011, the courts say Section 83 governs the taxation of all compensation for personal services, but the IRS lies on the stand claiming to be unfamiliar with Section 83. Only one person can explain what Section 83 means, David Merlin. Visit takefromcaesar.us for more information. Okay, this is Gordon Martinez. The show is called American Honor. And it's brought to you by RBN. Uh, please uh, continue with the uh, revelation of uh, this document. And the jury verdict form reads, 
as to count one of the superseding indictment charging conspiracy to commit an offense against the United States in violation of Title 18, United States Code, Section 371, we, the jury, and then it goes through and says, what do we find? Unanimously find, and then it has empty lines for potential check boxes or marks or initials, and under number one, assault on a federal officer, that's left blank. Under number two, threatening a federal officer, a uh, law enforcement officer, that's left blank. Uh, number three, use and carry of a firearm in relationship to a crime of violence, that's left blank. Number four, obstruction of the due administration of justice, that's left blank. Number five, interference with interstate commerce by extortion, that's left blank. Number six, interstate travel in aid of extortion, that's left blank. So those were all the different things that the government spent two months putting on evidence, trying to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that one, two, three, all of these defendants were guilty of conspiracy against the United States. And then there's a number seven option, and it says none of the above. If the jury chooses this answer, then the jury must find all defendants not guilty of count one. And there's a check mark in that area. Now, it's important to know that there are jury instructions that are official court records that are given by the court, they're debated about by the parties, argued about by the parties from before the trial, sometimes through the trial, all the way up until the very end, and the jury instructions tell the jury that what they put on this form has to be their official decision. This isn't like scratch paper. This isn't... Um, you know, like a working draft that you make changes to. If you make mistakes on the jury verdict form, you have to destroy it and get a new jury verdict form because it is the official court document. And what, what's even more interesting is down on the bottom of that same page, it says, for count one, we the jury unanimously find as to, and then it goes through all six of these first defendants, Greg Burleson, uh, Scott Drexler, Todd Engel, Ricky Loveland, uh, Eric Parker, and Stephen Stewart, and the not guilty line is checked on every single one of those, which means at some point in filling out this form, the jury was not hung. The jury had reached a unanimous verdict. They didn't change that. Now, there does appear to be, subsequently, lines, horizontal lines striking over those check marks. There's no indication what that means. Okay, so if you want to hear the full on that, you can get that on my YouTube. And you can find me on YouTube under Dancing Win 1970. Or you can type in Lori Anderson. You can find that. Or you can find it on my Google Plus so that you can hear the whole spiel about the details and they show documents and everything. Gordon, I want to thank well, you so well, well, much Lori, for having uh, me. You satisfied exactly what I wanted to have done. Exactly. I wanted this, this information to come out and I want to have you back on my show again uh, when it, whenever you, uh, next Saturday again and we can continue to talk about this thing because this is important. This is an important and it's truthful. And it's, uh, and it's information that's going to affect everybody. Absolutely. So. I would be glad to come back. And everybody remember this. Miranda v. Arizona, the claim and exercise of a constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime. Thank you for having me on the Amen. show today, Gordon. Thank you. Amen. Well, folks, uh, tune in next uh, Saturday, 4 o'clock. And this is Gordon Martinez signing off. Uh, and it's been a slice. <laughs>